is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The natural mind does not understand the things of the spirit. If you have your Bible this morning, let's turn to the um, second Samuel chapter 23. We'll be looking at second Samuel chapter 23 from verse 8 all through to 17. The scripture said, this be the mighty man, the, the name of the mighty man whom David had, the Tushmanite that sat in the seat chief among the captains. The same was Adino the Esnite. He left up, he lift up his spear against eight hundred whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eliza, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with the David, when they defy the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand cleaved unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Herorite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils and the people fled from the philistines but he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the philistines and the lord wrought a great victory and three of the thirty chief went down and came to david in the harvest time unto the cave of adullam the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in an hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was in the Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three Mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the man that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he will not drink it. These things did these three mighty Man, um, this morning or noon, I'm going to be teaching on a subject I simply title, How Resourceful Are You? Um, yesterday, while I was praying, at first, I, I, um, the title I had there was How Valuable Are You? And why I was praying and, um, Believe the spirit of the Lord dropped it in my heart that um, everyone is valuable. But the thing is, um, resourcefulness is a choice. Um, the value is on the inside of us. What we do with it is the choice we make. So, um, I've had some, uh, my daughters have had some few dollar bills now um, in the house. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that dollar bill has been there for over a year. Um, but they will play with it, and sometimes when they play with it, it gets to a point, and they dump it there, and they forget it. And the day they remember again, they pick it up and play with it, and they drop it and all that. And, um, you know, uh, when I picked it up three days ago, and it dawned on me that, you know, even though they've played, done all kind of things with it, if I still take this thing, 
and take it to the store. They will not say that because my children has run Fando it that is no longer useful, is no longer valuable. It will still get me something. So value, when the scripture said the gift and calling of our God are without repentance. Everything we are much more valuable than we think. So the truth is that every one of us has value. But uh, the thing is, being resourceful is a choice that we make along our way to destiny. But let's go ahead for a word of prayer. Spirit of the living God will bless you again. And we ask, O oh Lord, that your word, O oh Lord, will minister life. Lord, encourage us, transform us, change us, make us better. Lord, even as you position us, even for that which you have in store for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The, the, the truth is that in, in life, you know, um, it's one thing for us to have a vision, to have a desire. It's another thing for the accomplishment of that vision. Um, that you have a vision is not a guarantee that it will come to pass. And that because you also have a vision, does not also mean that you have all um, you have all the information that you need to bring it to pass. Nobody truly know what you know how the path that will take. The scripture said, "I know the thought that I think towards you, thought of good and not of evil, but to bring you to an expected end." In other words, the end will be good. It will be something that we will enjoy is something that we will like but the process is not what you know we have information it is as you walk the path as you walk with god that he reveals some things and some you will enjoy and some you will not some you will like and but some you will not but how you navigate those process will also determine if you will ever truly get to the place that God have in store for you. And you know, Joseph had a dream and he said, I dreamed that the sun, the moon, and everything bowed to me, but he never knew how the dream would be fulfilled. He never knew that he will, they would tie him, they will take him, he will go through the Potiphar's house, get to prison before he gets to his destination. I'm sure he never knew that, you know, that he would, uh, that he would be the prime minister of Egypt. But the thing is, he knew that God had a promise, God had a destiny for him you know david was anointed king and that even samuel say you know what we are not going to sit down until this child come so everything was put on hold to anoint david everything uh, everybody was standing waiting for david to come from the bush to be anointed king of Israel. But the thing is, why after he was anointed, they sent him back to the bush. You know, I'm sure he must have thought in his head, you know, now that I'm anointed, Saul will just call me and anoint me because I am the king. Saul should know. Uh, I don't know about you, you know, that sometimes I pray, you know, I go into the presence of God and God gives me some revelation, you know, those days. And when I come out, I expect everybody to see what I saw. So it is a process and the journey of life and you will never really know uh, where God is taking you to but it is working with him enjoying every phase of it and doing what is needful that truly take you into the destiny that God have in store for you. Let me tell you the truth is that God you know um God can desire a thing for you. You also need men in the accomplishment of whatever God has given to you. The scriptures talk of Jesus of Nazareth in Luke chapter 2 verse 51. It said, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature in favor with 
God and man. You need the anointing of God and you also need the anointing of man. You, so when God anoints you, it's one part. It also, you need the anointing of man to accomplish that which God has given to you. You know, God sent Jesus down, but he needed John to point it for the people to see. God sent Jesus, but he needed the 12 apostles to help him carry the message of grace and salvation. So we must understand that there is the part of God that is the part of man. And it is how, what we do here that determine how uh, we are able to navigate through to attain the things that God has given to us. Everything, because we can have all things and not possess it. You can have things and not be enjoying it. So that is where wisdom comes. You know, last week we talked about season, um, understanding the season of your life. The truth is that there are seasons in your life that you will not enjoy. There are seasons in your life that you do not envisage will come. There are seasons in your life that you will ask what is happening that you fear you cannot do anything. But there is something you can do about those seasons is enjoying the moment and doing the best that you can do. You must enjoy every moment and release do the best that you can do every time you know i i, I just imagine joseph in the house of potiphar because now this is the man that dreamt that the sun and the moon and everybody you know the father interpreted is you know from what you are saying everybody including me is going to bow so that you are going to be in the place you are going to be positioned and right uh, for every one of us to uh, bow to you but here is the man that had a big vision that had a dream that had a promise from God he is now a slave he could have just said you know what this thing and become a victim of circumstances become a victim of his environment become a victim of that season and not do anything about it but the scripture said even though uh, he was a servant the scripture said he got to a point where Potiphar left everything, he said everything in this house. Potiphar does not know. The only thing he does, he has not given me permission over is his wife. So he was, you know, so he must have been very, very resourceful. He must have been exceptional for Potiphar not to care about the things. And I also thought about it. He is not the first servant that got to Potiphar's house. He's not the first. He was not the first servant that was born in that place. But the thing is, he did some things uh, that made him become the chief of all slaves. So he became the pest. So the truth is that you might not even really have everything. You might not be, you know, where God wants you to be. You might not be enjoying. You might not have received the promise of God, but everywhere, every level can become the, the favorite that even um, talking about um, David, David was sent to the bush. Uh, of course, that uh, even when Samuel came to um, their home, that they did not even remember him that there was a child called David. He had to take Samuel to tell everybody to wait and bring that child that was choosing of the Lord. So that you know, tells me, or I, I assume that he was not really, you know, really cared for or remembered in the family house. And you know, so many theologians have said, you know, that he was born out of wedlock, that uh, the mom was not really uh, the rest children's mom. So 
that they really just take him. He was like a child that was not wanted in the family. But the thing is, that did not stop him. The scripture said that when the bear and the lion came against him, he went, oh, he went after them, put his life on the line, and killed the bear and the lion the scripture said when he got to the battlefield to go and give his brothers food uh, the scripture said that why he had goliath and he said who is this of circumcised philistine that he should defy the army of the living god i'm going to defend my people i'm going to defend god i'm not going to allow disgrace to come into the israel so he put his life in the line to make sure he takes away the reproach of Israel. Uh, so much so that his brother said, you have come again. I know the naughtiness of your heart. Uh, I, I, I believe, for me, I believe when people are not saying you are doing too much, you are really not doing anything. A call, a people, a gathering, of leaders in faith and in Christ, in commerce and industry, in sports and entertainment, in beauty and fashion, in government and in education, in spirit and in truth. We are moved with a passion and zeal for the lost and the hurting world. We are equipped to build bridges and raise platforms to society. We stress cultural relevancy and yet harmonize our diversity as we communicate by all means our message. We are gathering of the saints, raising leaders and rebuilding nations. Because sometimes you have to get to that point where they say you are doing too much. Uh, you have to, because you have to, uh, sometimes we want to do what, just do just enough, but that is really not what, you know, promotes you. That is not what takes you. That is not what, you know, transforms you. Being extra sometimes is what align you for the promises of God for your life it will align you for the things you know i think about it if uh, joseph you know who was let even say that um they accused him they took him to prison it would have been any other prison that when the pharaoh dreamt they would never have remembered uh, Joseph, but the thing is, it was what he did. It was what he was doing as a servant. It was what he was doing as a prisoner. It was what promoted him and took him to the place, to the palace that made him a prime minister. A man told me, and I've always said it here, he said, the eyes that are seeing you are much more than the eyes that you are seeing there are people who are watching you that are capable of blessing you or that god has position to take you to the next level and sometimes we think oh we know and when that time come i will show them my value the thing is sometimes you will not have opportunity to discuss with those kind of people and uh, why they were looking they said the spirit of the lord departed from saul and an evil spirit uh, from the uh, it say and an evil spirit from the lord came upon uh, saul what happened the scripture said that god the the scripture said that they recommended david they said david was the one they said david we know a man the son of jesse is a corny player and uh, though david was not in the place of discussion david was in, not in that place where they were having that discussion you must understand that, that what bless you and uh, many a time what god used to bless you you might not even be there when they are having that discussion. You no, know, I remember those days when I was um, still in Lasso, that's Lagos State, 
um, university. I was approached by one HOD um, then, and they said they wanted me to be an office boy in Lasso then, um, even though I didn't think the distance, but I thought about it. And he said, you know, we've seen you, we observe you. And I was an associate um, fellowship pastor that sometimes they have brought me in the front of the class and disgraced me several times. They say, you don't have work to do. Your mother sent you to school to come and read. You say it is fellowship, it is God. They were still the same people that said they want me to work with them because they saw that they have seen me they can trust me and um, they feel you know i can be one of the office boy and then i think they were just um, building the management science then some people are there that are looking at you that are capable of blessing you you know there is this story i I read in one of the books I was reading, and I want to read it to us. Um, I, tr I copied um, it from the book. Um, the story goes like this. A father came to ask an employer why his three sons, all working at the same company, each and such vastly different salaries. The employer decided to let the father learn for himself. So he asked the father to secrete himself, to hide himself, while the first son was called into the office to be given an assignment. The first son arrived. Here goes. He was told that an airplane from the ferries has just landed at the airport, that he was to go down to the airport, take an inventory of all the plane, and determine if there were any item of content in the plane, in the plane was worth purchasing and report back his funding as soon as possible. The first son accepted the assignment, left the office, and returned back after 15 minutes later with his report as follow. I make a call down to the airport, and I was able to determine that the plane was loaded with some relevant re relatively worthless merchandise consisting of approximately about a hundred dozen of toy dust about a thousand dozen pencil and some rows of fabric the first son was dismissed and the second son was then summoned he was given the same assignment he left and returned to the office for, a, uh, for about an hour and a half later, an hour and a half later with, his, with this report. I went down to the airport and asked the member of the crew to show me the cargo manifest. He showed me that there were 135 dozen of Taiwan used toy doors of adequate quality, 2,000 dozen boxes of inexpensive color pencil, and 500 rows of fine silk fabric from Hong Kong. He thanked the second son for his effort and dismissed him. And then the third son was then summoned. He too was given the exact same assignment. He left and did not return to the office until the long passing closing time. This was the report. I, I went down to the airport. I asked a member of the crew to help me inspect the content of the plane. There were 135 dozen Taiwan used toy doors, 
The price and quality was adequate, but it's not worth spending a lot, a lot of much of our time marketing them. So I called our distributor in New York and made a quick deal for him to buy the entire shipment. This was, this will result in an immediate profit of about $2,000. I also discovered 2,000 buses of colored pencil. The quality here was extremely poor. No matter what the price is, not what the risk to market them, so I passed. Next there were about 500 roll or supposedly five fabric from Hong Kong. Upon closer inspection, I determined that only 200 of the roll was exceptional quality and at a price to make substantial profit. I call our San Francisco distributor and sold the 200 roll of a gross profit of $4,000. Finally, while checking in deep in the cargo bay, I discovered this item that was loaded on the plane at the last minute, and they did not appear in the inventory list. Luckily, this was the best part of the inventory. Fine cabin, attic statue that are extreme rare quality, the finest I've ever seen. Yet, their price were substantially below their value. I contacted the local expert in, the, uh, in attic for a second opinion. Only a short time ago, he was able to confirm my appraiser. So I took possession of the entire collection. I have no doubt, giving proper marketing and adequate time, we will be able to turn in about 100,000 profit. I will give you a detailed report in the morning. The third son was then thanked for his effort and also dismissed. Then the employer called the father from his hiding spot and discussed what he was witnessed, what he has witnessed. He said, your first son does not even do what he is told. That is why he is paid the least. The second son does only what he is told, and that is why he is paid a little more. But the third son does far more than what is asked of him, far more than what is expected from a mere employee. That is why he is paid the most. Frankly, your first two sons are not more than any other employee in my company. Adequate, but dispensable. But your third son is a rare breed. To me, he is indispensable. In other words, they have the potential that the last son have, but they were not. They are adequate with what, but they have the potential. They have what it takes, but the thing is they are dispensable. The truth in life, it is a choice what you do with what and they feel i if i will analyze i feel the first song will say you know it's a smart thing to just call and not even go there and it's time you know uh, coming back in 15 minutes will impress my boss you must understand that life some people are watching you he said look i can sack those two people are not think about it. They are dispensable. But the day I lose your third son, I know I have lost something because he is indispensable. You have to be conscious of the things 
you do and how you do things because what you do there are people that are watching you will not always have time to convince people of what you have inside you will not always have time to tell people the value that you have they will need to see it and uh, sometimes even recommend you for promotion even recommend you to things um, it was the car bearer that recommended joseph to pharaoh first samuel chapter 22 verse 2 please everyone that was in distress everyone that was in debt everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became uh, a captain over them and there were with him about 400 men the people that came to david were about 400 men but it was not all of them that was mighty men we must understand the scripture in second samuel verse uh, chapter 23 was talking about the mighty men of david and it told you how they stood out from the crowd and he told you what they did and the things they did they put their life on the line they go extra mile they did what they needed to do to bring about and they had great victory the lord brought great victory into their life how are you doing what you are doing what are you doing being resourceful is a choice is a choice you make not because you are not able not because you don't have the capacity not because you don't have what it takes but the thing is what are you doing about it are you just doing enough or you are doing beyond you are you being creative you know i was talking to somebody the other day and he said you know this is what you asked me to do and i said that is the problem because the thing is you are always doing what they ask you to do you don't do beyond what they ask you to do in life you must understand for you to be outstanding you sometimes have to be creative god has given us a creative ability that was what he gave to us from genesis he gave us the power let us make man in our image after our likeness let them have dominion for you to have dominion you must be creative you must harness the creative ability that God has given to you and that is how you become very resourceful and harnessing the creative ability that has been given to you by God also means that sometimes you will need to do beyond um, the normal you must understand life will not always give you what you desire life would give you what you demand of it and how are you demanding that thing from life that you know you're good enough that you are good for the things does not mean that god that it will just be handed over to you that you are capable does not mean it will just be handed over to you that you are good to have this or you are more than qualified does not mean that it will be handed over to you it is how you position yourself when god was promising joseph when god was promising him that the sun and the moon will bow to him potiphar was not there when he was promising him the cup bearer was not there but the thing is god put things in their way put things in his way that will help him in the accomplishment so i just imagine if he was not doing what he was doing in potiphar's house if he was not refining what he was giving to him in the prison he would never have gotten and it will look like god became a liar because god can never lie god it is impossible for god to lie but the thing is the man that he has also put in place to anoint you for 
physical or for the earthly blessing? Are they seeing you? Are they seeing the blessing? Because it is one thing. Jesus had favor with God and he also had favor with men. After God has anointed you, you need the anointing of men to accomplish the things that God has given to you. And sometimes the people that God has designed to bless you or to move you into the destiny that he has in store for you, you are not even seeing them. They are seeing you. What are you doing? The people that have the capacity to bless you, you might not even see them, but it is what you are doing that will position you or that will move you into that place where they will see you. you must intentionally, and you know, like the story we read, all of them had what it takes, but one was the only person that harnessed his gift. Every one of them had what it takes. What you do, the truth is that we don't know everything. You will never get to a place. It doesn't matter if you, if you are God's assistant. Even if you fellowship with God, God will not give you the details. It is in the process of what you are doing that God opens those doors for you. I was just thinking about it the other day. A friend of mine called me and he said, you know what, you have you know, the grace to just meet people, connect with people that helps and all that. And I thought about that thing for a very long time. And I also discovered so many of them, I didn't look for them, they were looking for me. And I've also discovered that it's not as if I was even better off than others. Sometimes if how you position yourself will determine what you get out of life. There are people that have the power to bless you. There are people that have the power to promote you, but they are watching and they don't, and it's not as if they are sitting down watching because when people, when God said people your way, it is something that triggers something. But how are you positioning yourself? Are they recognizing you or they are just seeing you as any other person? Are they seeing you as just like any other employee? Are they seeing you like any other Christian? Or you are standing out. It is a choice. Everything, all things the scripture says, work together for good. It is they that love God and are called according to his purpose. Now, to love God is to do what he expects of you. Because a lot of people just think loving God is just praying. Part of loving God is finding out what he expects you to do and do it with all your heart. You can't tell me you love God and you are doing things your own way and not finding out what is God. In this place, what is God expecting me to do? In my workplace, what is God expecting me to do? In my family, what is God expecting me to do? In my church, what is God expecting me to do? In the, friend, in the cycle of my friend, what is God expecting me to do? What you do determine because the blessing, it is the glory of the Lord to conceal a matter, but it is the honor of kings to search out that matter. Sometimes searching out that matter is just simply enjoying and doing the best at where you are, not even knowing. The children did not know that they were all being tested at the same time. But once to that, the other one never did what he was. He was always doing whatever he likes to do. But the other one was always doing just enough. You can't stand out by just doing just enough. And you will never be trusted if you don't do what you are expected to do. You are expected to do and do beyond what you are expected to do. Father, Lord, will bless you. Ancient of days will thank you. Lord, we ask you, Lord, help us 
in this season to be more resourceful than we are. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.